Mr. Man over there. Uh, yep. The okay, let's bring it back together. Let's bring it back together. Okay. Three, <laughs> two, one. Wait, the Twinkies are coming. One, let's wait for them. I am a twin, so I'll wait for them. <laughs> okay. I was born first. But we're very different personalities. <laughs> okay, so um, where did we stop? Okay, so uh, we stopped at no evidence supporting um, the use of e-cigarettes to help quitting. They are less toxic, but we're going to talk about um, why they're still bad for you, even those who don't contain the nicotine part. Um, so we can, uh, yep, so this is different uh, types of uh, electronic or ends, if you will. Um, pipes, cigars, basically different levels of nicotine, different devices, different looks, whatever looks cool to you, they'll sell it to you. Um, we can actually skip, no, no, just stay on that one. Stay on the, yep. So um, what makes people think that um, e-cigarettes are healthier than regular cigarettes? And where, okay, yeah, they believe there's no tobacco. What, what do you mean by tobacco? So they, so they believe there's no nicotine? No, they believe there's nicotine, but just, just nicotine. okay. And we talked about nicotine and why, even if it's only nicotine, why it's uh, bad for you. Now, Thomas, tell me, uh, let's say there's only nicotine in it. W does that make it healthy? No. Why? Okay, besides the nicotine, though. Okay. So, exactly. So, um, how does a conventional cigarette get delivered to your lungs? Like a conventional meaning normal cigarette. Mouth to lung, yeah, but like, do you eat it? You smoke it, okay. How does that smoke come to be a smoke? You light it with a lighter, and then what happens? It burns. Imagine burning. Okay, so it burns and it releases the smoke, and the smoke has the nicotine. You breathe it, the smoke goes to your lung, the nicotine is in the smoke, okay? Now, people uh, with electronic cigarettes, how do you deliver it to your lungs? There is no burning, they think. What happens? How do you get the vapor out of something that doesn't have vapor? Yeah, what does the compartment have? Exactly, it has a coil. So that the coil has a, there's voltage there, there's electricity, physics, basic physics. Um, heats the liquid, and then the liquid contains the nicotine most of the time, um, and it has other flavorings. And what Thomas was saying, other things in this electronic cigarette called chemicals that convert the liquid into vapor. You cannot have, you cannot have something out of nothing, okay? You cannot produce vapor that has flavor and nicotine out of something you are claiming is nothing. You can't. You can't have water or claim it's only water and somehow you're breathing in nicotine and flavors and things that go into your lungs and give you effects. You can't. Water, drinking water does not give you these effects, okay? Uh, or breathing normal air. Room air does not give you these effects. So um, you can uh, go to the next slide. So lighting a traditional cigarette, the, uh, the tar is produced by s uh, burning that tobacco versus electronic cigarette has a liquid and it, it gets heated. There is a visual coming to, to show you the difference. Um, there are many flavors, like I said, bubble gum, chocolate, peppermint, more and more. Um, th can you guys read that red line? And that's your answer, Josephine. One cartridge is equivalent to about 20 cigarettes. That's equivalent to 30 milligrams of absorbed nicotine, not the content of, so there's way more nicotine in the liquid, but what your lungs actually absorb is about 30 milligrams of nicotine. That's really high, very high. You, uh, do you know how much nicotine you absorb from one cigarette? 
one milligram. So one cartridge has 30 cigarettes, about 30 cigarettes. One, one to one and a half milligrams, depends. Um, you can go to the next slide. So can you remind me your name? Yep. Tutu, okay. Tutu was describing how does an e-cigarette work, and this is the, on the right. The heating coil is in the front, uh, vaporizing chamber, and then you have the voltage control, LED indicator, that blue part is the battery, rechargeable, um, and all the way down to the front, that's the nicotine cartridge. That's how it works. Okay, uh, now, don't go, don't go to the next slide, don't go. Okay. <laughs> Why, um, they did a survey in 2016, the FDA did it, um, among you, and they, um, Ask them, why do you use e-cigarettes? So what do you think the most common reason they said was? Peer pressure. What do you mean by convenience? Okay, so you think it's easier than uh, regular cigarettes. Okay, um, but just so to correct you, there are a lot of states for, uh, that ban uh, indoor e-cigarette smoking. It's not legal in every state. Uh, but yeah, that's that's good, but that's not the most common. She, b remind me of your name again. Marina said that peer pressure, you're, you're actually right. that the smoke is different and like, like I think it's healthier right yeah, okay I think it's healthier which I, I mean I, I and I said it's less toxic but it's not healthy um, but but Marina was right it uh, used by a family family member or a friend is the number one reason why they said they're smoking e-cigarettes because they think it's normal and right to do if you I mean uh, our family members are supposed to be our role models but that's not necessarily true for each and every one of us I have an uncle who is a s chimney. That doesn't make him a good role model, but he's still my uncle. But he smokes, and then his younger brother started smoking, and my dad was forced to try cigarettes when he was young, but thankfully, thank God, they, he, he hated them. He said, no, I'm not doing that. Um, and just so you know, guys, Secondhand smoking is just as bad as first-hand smoking. Uh, but you can go to the next slide. Harry? Okay, <laughs> okay so uh, I, I think it's a here, but it says 39% said that uh, there was used by a friend or family member, and then 31% flavors. You guys said it. It's, it's tasty. It's, it, I want more. I want the. Ch I want to try the chocolate today instead of the peppermint. So the flavors are number two, and then 17% said they believe it's less harmful than tobacco products. But keep in mind, it was only 17%. Do you guys know math? What does that? What 83% know that is harmful. Only 17% thought it was less harmful than uh, conventional tobacco. Okay, so. Uh, before we talk about why it's bad, we'll discuss uh, one of the most popular forms of e-cigarettes. We can uh, we can go to the next slide. What is a jewel? It's on the screen. It's an e-cigarette. It's a high-tech looking e-cigarette. It it is a um, shaped in the shape of a flash drive. Um, and it's, it works exactly the same. It's battery operated and it heats the nicotine liquid and it gives you out the vapor to breathe. Um, it's... Um, Some of you have seen it before. A 
if you uh, read the far right hand side, you're absolutely right. Widespread of jewels in students uh, and schools, including classrooms and bathrooms. They're very well hidden. You can't tell what that is and think it's a flash drive. And it's, it's used everywhere. Um, the difference between Joule and uh, other e-cigarettes is it actually has a higher content of nicotine. And uh, according to the manufacturer, I'm not making this up, uh, each pod, uh, basically those little rectangular things on the left-hand side, it has as much as 20 regular cigarettes worth of nicotine in it. They make it look really cool. You look cool, so buy it. But um, it's actually way more dangerous than uh, normal looking e-cigarettes, I guess. Um, now, is Joule the only um, uh, type of e-cigarettes that looks like a flash drive? No, they have competitors. Um, and they actually can use Joule to deliver marijuana instead of tobacco and nicotine. You can go to the next slide. This is what it looks like. So PAX era is the marijuana one. In case uh, you get offered one, this is what when you say no. And why? Because I know this has marijuana in it. Because I actually am knowledgeable. And uh, Mark 10 is another uh, competitor for Joule that carries nicotine. OK, so uh, before we go to the next slide, why are e-cigarettes bad? You can stop using your phones because it's distracting me. Why are they bad? I said it w they were less toxic, but not completely harmless. Why are they bad? Who said it? It's addicting because of the nicotine. But what if I tell you, oh, I'm selling you something that's nicotine free? Because any smoke in your lungs is still harmful. Okay, why? We already, I already kind of talked about it. I said you can't have something out of what? Out of nothing. So to for, for some equipment to be so um, strong to convert liquid into vapor, you have to have something to do that, okay. not just heat. Um, you can't just have water. And uh, like I said, you can't have people like it and want it more with, with only water. It doesn't make any sense. Okay? So um, people would say, well, it's way, way uh, less dangerous um, than and harmful than cigarettes. Well, that's like comparing that's like comparing the size of Alaska to North Carolina. North Carolina is a really big state. Well, I'm going to compare it to Alaska and I'm going to prove to you that it's smaller. Well, yeah, this is a fact. But that doesn't mean North Carolina is a small state, right? So why are you not comparing it with the uh, air? Why are you not comparing it with water? Why are you not comparing it with normal, healthy stuff, healthy living that, you know, that we use every day? So, of course, you're, you're going to win the argument because it's a fact. But that doesn't make it um, harmless. And I, um, you can go to the next slide. I, I like this term, good, for, good from far, but far from good. It looks good on the outside. It looks like it, it actually sounds better and it less harmful, but it is pretty bad when you actually use it. And um, I don't know if you guys know Greek mythology about the Trojan horse. Have you ever heard of it? That, that tale that they, uh, th the Greek were fighting a city called Troy after their main warrior died in Troy called Hector, they, uh, the Greeks said, okay, this is our chance to really invade the, the city. And what they did was they left a massive wooden horse outside the city. And uh, the, Tro the, Tro the Trojans thought it was from the gods. And that's a gift. And it looked great on the outside. And uh, they uh, moved it to inside the city. And once they did that, during the night, everyone was sleeping. Um, warriors came out of the Trojan horse and destroyed, burned the whole city. That's exactly what you're doing to yourself. You think that you're using something harmless. You think that it, it's good, but it's not. It's, it's um, the chemicals that help you convert the, vapor, the liquid into vapor. 
are still cancer-causing chemicals. They, they, they have these same chemicals in them that, that, that help burn or heat up the nicotine to make it into vapor. Um, children and adults have been poisoned by swallowing or breathing these chemicals on their like skin, accidentally swallowing that liquid instead of before it goes into vapor. Um, in the eyes, many accidents happen, lawsuits everywhere, you can look it up. Um, and then defective batteries, you, you guys definitely heard of it exploding in people's faces. Um, uh, you can go to the next slide. The use of any tobacco product is unsafe for any young person or adult, regardless of the method of delivery. This is just a different method of delivery that looks cooler and healthier. Um, it's not um, the aerosol, it's not harmless water vapor. Like I said, you cannot have something out of nothing. Um, it does contain, most of them do contain nicotine, even in trace amounts and other toxins. And these are uh, just uh, some of them. Uh, Ultrafine is a, a particle basically that you inhale deep into your lungs and it causes toxicity. Um, this, is, this is actually, this was studied in small studies, but it's been proven to cause toxicity. And uh, flavoring, so diacetyl, it's a flavoring uh, material. It is a chemical linked to, to serious lung disease as well. Uh, volatile organic compounds, you know what volatile means? It's pretty labile, like it can change into vapor or fire at room temperature, room air. Um, organic compounds do exist in these vapes and uh, cancer causing chemicals, like I said, heavy metals, tin, nickel, lead. Any vape you, you seen you, uh, you've seen people use, um, or you're offered, it does have, it, I guarantee you, one of these uh, materials, even if it doesn't have nicotine. So these are some states um, that unfortunately allow minors to use e-cigarettes. 10 states in the DC do allow. Um, only three states out of the 50 states in the United States um, are prohibit indoor e-cigarettes, as I was telling you. Um, but uh, that means workplaces, restaurants, bars, schools, and stuff like that. The 70 million children are exposed to uh, secondhand smoking or e-cigarettes in the United States. Just as bad. We see them all the time. Secondhand smokers never smoked a single cigarette in their life. They grew up in a smoker's household, and their friends smoked all their life. They have lung cancer. They have COPD. They have everything. A smoker has. I smell it when I'm driving and my windows are all the way up. I, st I, I stop at a traffic light, I smell smoke and I look and the person next to me is smoking. I can't even, like, I, I start coughing, it's, it's crazy. But yes, you are getting it into your lungs. It's called diffusion. Okay. Um, oh, sorry. So is there like certain types of smoke where like you can't see it? You can't, like? Like for example, say someone's smoking next to you and you don't like physically see like the smoke coming your way. Is there still like chemicals that like, you can't yeah. see that are coming? Yeah, well, I mean, are they smoking nothing? What are they smoking? Normally you see the smoke, but it's like you don't, it's like someone's smoking this way and the smoke doesn't come this way. You don't you're see still, it. You're still inhaling still it. You're still inhaling it. Is that your question? Yeah. Yeah, you're still inhaling it, of course. I mean, 
When somebody walks into a room and they're wearing perfume, how do you smell the perfume? I mean, they're all the way across the room. Well, I mean, th that's not necessarily true because when, like, for example, I'm seeing patients in the clinic, I know they just smoked. I mean, I, I cough the minute I walk in, you can smell it. And they, unfortunately, don't think they smell. That doesn't mean I'm inhaling the smoke because they just finished smoking. That was outside. That was, But, it, yeah, it's on your clothes. It's on your teeth. It's on your shoes. everywhere. But that doesn't mean I'm smelling it. I'm, I'm inhaling it because they're not actively smoking right now. Now, if they're smoking and they're in this room, yes, I'm probably inhaling that, that air. Um, next slide is just a visual of what, what I just talked about. So um, um, acetone is that the bottom diacetyl is it's just a flavoring. That's why you have a popcorn picture and a cotton candy picture because they do have that in these things. Um, and the heavy metals like tin, lead. lead, lead is very toxic. We test kids for lead, this is in the guidelines, American Academy of Pediatrics. At some point in your life, you should probably be tested for lead. Nowadays, I think they're, they're probably getting rid of these recommendations because there is not as much lead in everything we use anymore, uh, but it's a toxic metal. Um, and those other materials we talked about, like ultrafine and, and other particles. Um, yep, that's what I'm going on next. Can we go to the next slide real quick? These are people who had uh, e-cigarettes explode in their face. Again, just to uh, recap, they're not regulated by the Food and Drug Administration um, Center of Tobacco Products. Um, they do increase, this is well said, increase your risk for dual use, meaning regular cigarettes and e-cigarettes together and uh, they do cause lung injury, they decrease your immunity, causes infection, lung disease, and basically the bottom line is we need more research, we need more studies, we do not, as physicians, it's not in the recommendations, I can give you the article I have, evidence-based, if you go over the methods we use to help our patients quit, it is not listed right now as uh, one, one of them, okay? Um, transition. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Have you guys seen this before? Do you guys, does any one of you know what the, where that came from? Okay, what is the fish doing? <laughs> so let's start with the basics. He's going the opposite way. He's not, thank you, so. Um, Katie? Anthony, I'm sorry. Anthony said that uh, he's going the opposite way, and Joy, Julie, no, <laughs> Jessica, I'm sorry, too many J's. Uh, Jessica said he is not following the other fish, so two different point of views. One, yes, I'm not following them, and I'm also going to go to the other direction. This actually came from the Bible, uh, Romans 12.2, does anyone know the verse? Conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That by testing, by testing, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Okay, is uh, I mean, I guess hopefully after what we talked about, you guys know that this is not good, this is not acceptable, this is not perfect. Um, but another verse to answer your question. Yes, not directly mentioned in the Bible. Probably tobacco wasn't discovered when they were writing the Bible. I don't know, but, uh, but there are clear verses. 
And um, I mean, you can all use your different interpretations, but it's in the Bible. And if you uh, studied art before, there is a reason why this fish is orange. What does your eye see when you first look at the picture? The brightness of the, the orange fish, not the blue fish. Because they want, th yes, I am different and I want to stand out and I want to tell you that I don't agree with what you're doing and I, I know why, because I, I now know what's in these things. And I am making an informed decision to say no. Verse, uh, sorry, there is a verse that we can use since tobacco is not there by the time the gospel was uh, written. So um, if we can open uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 23, there's a very famous verse that we can use to tackle that. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> I, I thought you ended the presentation. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Uh, it's, we're going to talk about hookahs and then we're going to be done. <laughs> so uh, the last uh, last thing is hookah. We can go to the next slide uh, real quick because um, we've seen it a lot. Hookahs were actually... Uh, I just want you guys to keep it quiet because I cannot talk when you're talking. Can't talk. Okay, so um, they were um, s started being used in uh, Persia and India centuries ago, and they're um, you can see the picture. They're water pipes, and they're used to smoke um, uh, smoke made of tobacco. <laughs> Comes in different flavors. You name it, they have it, apple, mint, cherry, chocolate, coconut, licorice, cappuccino, watermelon. That's why it's so uh, popular. It's actually probably the most growing uh, method of tobacco um, among young people. One in every five um, high school seniors smokes hookah. One in every six girls smokes hookah. And in, uh, in college students, between 43 and 50%. Um, they now have e-hookah. And you can basically work the exact same way as e-cigarettes. We're not going to go into this again. Um, and then uh, that's the head has some openings in it where they dump it, and then it goes through that water pipe and uh, kind of boils it and produces the smoke. Now, is it just water? Thank you. So um, before we go to the next slide, how many how many cigarettes do you think are in uh, one uh, session of hookah? Of course, you're going to go high. Um, 30 something? Okay. 39. 100 and 103. Very specific. Okay. Did someone say something in the back? 80. 80? 200. Okay. So one hookah session has 200 puffs. Um, don't be fooled, though. Each cigarette is 20 puffs. That doesn't mean that each hookah session has 10 cigarettes. If you do the math 200 by 20, it should give you 10. The fact is um, the, the concentration is 36 times more tar in hookah. Basically, you're inhaling, inhaling 90,000 mLs of um, the stuff in one hookah session, and each cigarette is 600 mLs. So you're inhaling about 100 cigarettes in one session. That's like five packs of cigarettes in one session. OK, so um, now this might differ depending on the concentrations, but this is the average. This is from the CDC. This is not from a hookah website. This is from the Center for Disease Control. OK, um, so you can go to the next slide. Um, 
tobacco in hookahs is exposed to very, very high heat. Like I said, if you want to convert, yes. So I guess they mix it with a lot of water and other chemicals. Um, and it has those flavorings. It makes it lighter, but the actual concentration is way higher. Um, so yeah, they expose it to very high heat and sharp. The difference is uh, charcoal. And uh, I mean, we don't do that with uh, regular cigarettes or e-cigarettes. And uh, it's at least, at least as toxic as cigarettes, if not more, okay? Um, we talked about carbon monoxide in the very beginning with that cigarette picture and different chemicals. It is um, one of the main uh, ingredients in the hookah combinations and uh, it is toxic. It does have metals like e-cigarettes and it has cancer causing chemicals, lung, bladder, cancer, oral cancers, any type of cancer, you, you name it. Um, people, to me that's really disgusting that you're passing mouthpieces, the same mouthpiece to each other. That is disgusting. <laughs> but that, that's how people get different infections, um, STDs, herpes. Yep. Um, and then the same thing for pregnant women. Um, the babies are born low birth weight and they have a lot of respiratory issues and uh, have to be in the NICU and basically we have to stimulate their womb environment for many, many weeks to get them to a normal, healthy baby. Okay, Wait, so you can go to the next slide. Uh, one hour of hookah smoking is 100 cigarettes. Poisons, there are poisons that, um, like we talked about, and these are different, not all, but different types of cancers that it can cause. Um, besides the, uh, the unique thing about moving the mouthpiece, then you are increasing your risk for getting um, herpes and other diseases. Also TB, because how does TB get transmitted? We, when we get a patient with TB, tuberculosis, we have to isolate them in a, in a negative pressure room because it's, it's airbound. So you're sharing all of this with people, you're high risk. Um, now does non-tobacco hookah is okay? Why? I mean, this is the politically correct answer, but why? <laughs> I'm glad I came at least that stuck. Um, well, we just talked about carbon monoxide and other toxins. It's still in the non-tobacco hookah. Charcoal, thank you. So charcoal, carbon monoxide, metals, they're still in non-tobacco, non-nicotine hookah. And uh, we just talked about the cancers and the heart disease, lung disease. Yes. Yeah, it has 36 times more tar. Yep, yeah. So uh, we can go to the next slide. Just because it's social doesn't mean it's safe. People do it because it's fun and we're in big groups and peer pressure and my friends are doing it, my family, my dad is doing it. So I think it's great. Unfortunately, like I said, we need good role models. And unfortunately, not, not all of us are blessed with this and we have to be careful with what our families do because not everything we do is right. I do wrong things, that doesn't mean it's right and that my kids should, should do it. Um, but uh, this is the number that everybody talks about, 1-800-QUIT-NOW, not just for um, cigarettes, but it's also for hookah and e-cigarettes as well. And then uh, maybe we can go to the next slide. Is that the verse Jan was talking about? Similar? Uh, we just need to quickly go over the laws, North Carolina state law. And okay. So, <laughs> this, I uh, actually Harry helped me with this slide. Uh, this is uh, directly from the uh, bill that was passed in 2013 by the North Carolina uh, Senate, uh, 
senators, and um, it's a law. It's we you can't break the law. Hopefully, we don't want you doing that. Uh, and is it really worth it? So um, I don't know. Can someone read it for us? <laughs> it's too small. I try to make it as big as possible. So I guess um, let me explain. The, t the very top part is uh, the um, the title of the the bill, and if you look here at the the bolded lines at the bottom, is youth access to tobacco, and they crossed out products because that was revised. They uh, instead they wrote tobacco derived products, vapor products, and cigarette wrapping papers, because people were, were saying, well, you're only talking about. Uh, tobacco and e-cigarettes are not tobacco. So they uh, made it very clear in 2013. And then these the two sections are under that bill. So you can uh, maybe maximize that B that section. Sale or distribution uh, to persons <laughs> under the age of 18 years old. So if I am 25 and I work up and I'm selling it to you, because not, hopefully none of you are 18. Uh, this is a misdemeanor, class two misdemeanor, which I'm gonna explain what it is. Um, and then they're just uh, explaining like exactly what what will give you a misdemeanor. You're, if any shall, you can uh, minimize it, I'll just read it off the, the full slide. If any person shall distribute or aid, assist, or abet uh, any other person in distributing tobacco products or sick wrapping paper to any person under the age of 18 years, or any person shall purchase tobacco products or cigarette wrapping papers on behalf of a person under the age of 18, they crossed out and left 18. The person shall be guilty of a class two misdemeanor. And then the next section, that talking about you as a minor under the age of 18 buying these products. Purchased by persons under the age of 18, if any person under the age of 18 years purchases or accepts receipt or attempts Attempts to purchase um, or accept receipt of tobacco products, wrapping papers, or presents or offers to any person any uh, purported proof of age uh, which is false, fraudulent, or not actually his or her for the purpose of purchasing or receiving any tobacco product or cigarette wrapping papers, the person shall be guilty of a class two misdemeanor. What is a class two misdemeanor? Does anybody know? And uh, if there's any law people here, they can correct me if I'm wrong. How do you open the iPad, Buna? Sorry, it locked on me. So um, I guess I'll let Buna do that. There are um, different levels of uh, crimes, if you will, in any state. There is something called shh. There's something called felony, and there's something called misdemeanor. Thank you. Thank you. So um, a misdemeanor is, and I'm going to read it out for you. You can a class two misdemeanor in the state of North Carolina carries a maximum penalty of 60 days in jail and a $1,000 fine. Um, it can include simple assault, disorderly conduct, resisting a police officer, carrying a concealed weapon. So uh, you're on the same level as people assaulting people and people resisting police officers. Now, does that mean, let's say you now are uh, you're guilty of a misdemeanor, if you get charged, if you get charged, this will go on your record forever. You cannot take that off unless it, you're um, expunged, which means to go to the trial, you have to go to court, the judge has to decide that this is gonna be erased from your history, which very rarely happens depending on your prior crime history, your age, the actual misdemeanor that you, you did. Um, but it will stay on your record forever. So uh, if you uh, plead guilty, if you plead guilty, then uh, they do have uh, some gentler um, 
punishment ways where you will have to do like uh, time in uh, substance uh, rehab or uh, you know service time. Um, if you plead not guilty, you will be taken to court for a trial. That's how the law works. Okay. And again, this all goes on your record. Is it really worth it? No, I don't think it's worth it. Uh, just keep in mind, when you go to college, when you apply for a job, uh, when it goes on your record, any type of insurance you have is higher, just like driving under the influence. When uh, this goes to your insurance company, they raise your rates. So your insurance goes up, and any background, any, any college you apply to or job you apply to, you have to have a background check. They, they will do a background check and they will find that they might not give you the job. Probably, most likely, they won't give you the job because you're competing with so many other candidates who are perfect. So why, why take you if you have that on your record? The same for uh, physicians. If they have that on the record, they will show up and they won't probably let them get their medical license. They won't be able to practice. Keep in mind the word attempt to purchase. That's big. That's a big deal. Um, just last, and I'm gonna go quickly through these because I think I think they deserve their own hour. But there are ways to help people who who are smoking, who have family members who smoke. Um, it's probably my cue to stop. <laughs> but um, uh, uh, for us physicians. Um, we use something called nicotine replacement therapy, and these are medically studied. Um, the paper I was reading was talking about 132 trials they did on patients who are using these methods to help them quit, and they have numbers, statistics. Doctors like to see numbers and statistics. That's how they get the message across, just like engineers, I think. <laughs> so um, there are, they work through three different ways. They decrease withdrawal symptoms, they decrease your reinforcing effects of nicotine, the, the, the whole I want more and I'm gonna try more and different drugs, and they do have a, a good effects on your mood and attention that you're, I think, going to nicotine to get. Um, and if you can read the, the animation on the right side, this is the, let me finish this and then we'll, we'll answer your question. Um, this is the mistake many people do, and that's why they don't, they're not able to quit. Uh, you first stop smoking, then you wait for your desire to fade away. It's going to be difficult. Now, if you first remove the desire and then you stop smoking, super easy. Easier said than done, but there are success rates. And like I said, I like to see numbers. These are, here are the numbers. So nicotine replacement therapy has six different drugs. The most commonly used and the, probably the most effective is nicotine patch. And we'll talk about how that works. And then there's lozenges, gum sprays, sublingual um, tablets and inhalers. Uh, and these all have nicotine in them. Um, so nicotine patch, what it does is, um, very beginning I told you, short, high amounts versus slow, steady. This one has very slow, steady um, amounts of nicotine. Basically works through a negative feedback loop in your brain that inhibits the production of epi, norepi, and dopamine. So basically, the nicotine will get, get there and it's confused because it can't find the dopamine to bind to, and that's how it works. Okay, so it's kind of a negative feedback. And then um, the lozenges, gums have similar ways of working. Um, nicotine patch, 20% absence rates after one year using, um, and then the others are 50 to 70%. 
Now, these are the nicotine replacement therapies. There are other drugs we can use with patients. Only physicians should be prescribing these, and it has to be monitored. And keep in mind, nicotine replacement therapy also has to be used in conjunction with support therapies, counseling, group therapy, and professional guidance. Okay? You can't just go pick it. I mean, people do it all the time. They go to the pharmacy. It's on the counter. They, all these nicotine patches and lozenges, gums, everything is over the counter. But if you don't have a professional helping you out and have good, a good support system, your quit rate will, uh, will go down. Um, the Chantex is a medication um, that is, works by uh, basically antagonizing nicotine. Ba it's competing with nicotine for dopamine. But then once it binds to dopamine, its effects are much less harmful than nicotine. So Chantex is a good drug prescribed by, by doctors, and then uh, Wellbutrin, Zyban, the, um, the generic is uh, bupropion is uh, another drug we use, and that is not nicotine containing, nothing at all, and uh, it helps uh, improve your mood, attention, and um, actually Wellbutrin is very commonly used for people who have depression and smoking because it works for both. Um, but I, like I said, that's why I bolded the red part. These all have to be used with professional guidance and counseling and support groups. Um, each drug can, we can spend an hour talking about each drug, but this is more about the harmful effects of smoking than uh, these. But I just wanted you guys to be aware of, um, of that there are ways we use to help and that e-cigarettes are not one of them as of this year, at, at least, as of this year, because medicine changes. Um, but yeah, I think the verse was, we can talk about the verse and then. So we can apply this to any type of substance, uh, not necessarily cigarettes, but anything that can be addicting that we cannot stop. It's 1 Corinthians 10.23, and it can serve as a verse when we say that the Bible that didn't really mention smoking, right? So all things are lawful for me, but not all things are helpful. All things are lawful for me, but not all things edify. If you guys were paying attention, this was actually on my very, very first slide. Mm -hmm. So. So in 1 Corinthians 6, we see the same, a very similar copy of it. So that's the English translation of that part. And the reason I'm going to take it to 1 Corinthians 6 is because we know a little bit more about what it tells us in the end. You heard it, you heard Dr. Jan say, all things are lawful, but not all things are edifying. But not all things, all things are going to be helpful. I want to read to you something that St. Basil wrote. It's about the Old Testament, and then we'll come back to St. Paul. It'll be the end, because you guys are tired, I'm sure. And you've been great. If you like, St. Basil says, be attentive to the structure of the body. At how appropriate a dwelling for the soul the sovereign fashioner has created. He has made the human being alone of all the animals upright. That from your very form, you may see that your life is like those who live on high. All the quadrupeds, those are the people that the uh, animals on four legs, are bent down towards their stomach. While the human being is prepared to look up toward heaven, so as not to be devoted to the stomach or to the passions below the stomach, but to direct his whole desire toward the journey on high. Then God placed the head, listen to what St. Basil is saying. Then God placed the head at the top, locating in it the most valuable of the senses. There sight, hearing, taste, and smell have been established all near each other. And although confined in a small space, thank you, Hector. 
no one, none of them impedes the activity of the other. So your sight doesn't interfere with your taste, doesn't interfere with smell. Everything is designed and organized so neatly together and yet so carefully. And although confined in a small space, none of them impedes the activity of its neighbor. The eyes have laid hold of the highest looking points so that nothing blocks their view of the body's parts. But placed under the small projection of the eyebrows, they reach out from the prominence above in a direct line. Again, the hearing is not directed straight, but by a spiral-shaped pathway, it takes hold of the noises in the air. That's the cochlea. This indeed exhibits the highest wisdom, God's highest wisdom, enabling sound to pass through unhindered, or rather be let in, bending around the twist, while nothing from outside that accidentally falls in can be a hindrance to the auditory perception. Examine closely the nature of the tongue, how it is tender and nimble, and it is sufficient by its varied movement for every need of speech. You can use it. Does that make sense? I know it's complicated language. Is it making sense? Teeth, also organs of speech, provide strong resistance to the tongue and at the same time also take care of food. Some cutting it and others grinding it. Like wisdom teeth, they have some purpose <laughs> I, I don't know of. And other teeth have other purposes that I don't know of. And so when you have traversed all things with suitable reflection on each, hi, there you go, and have observed carefully how air is drawn in through breath, how warmth is kept around the heart and the organs of digestion and the channels of blood. From all these, you will perceive the unsearchable wisdom of the Creator. So you will also say to him with David the prophet, your knowledge from myself has become wonderful. Therefore, be attentive to yourself that you may be attentive to God to whom be glory and dominion unto the ages. Amen. What is St. Basil trying to say? Look at you. Look at me. I'm holding a baby just coincidentally where you have to step out. You can look at any baby. You can look at our baby. You and I and every one of us is made so carefully and so beautifully to the tiniest detail. So carefully and so beautifully and so purposefully to the glory of God. Am I prepared to take something that's so carefully made, so beautifully made, so purposefully made, and turn it into an object that's completely bedridden, it's a almost completely useless, cannot speak, cannot move, cannot feed itself, cannot sleep, becomes deformed? Am I prepared to take that responsibility and be held accountable to that before God? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Let's go to that verse again that Dr. Jan read. It's twin sister. Yep, and you'll find it in chapter 6. All things, chapter 6, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. Yes, you can do it. You can. Go for it. It's not going to be helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. It's okay, you know. You can do it if you want. You have free will. You have your right to do it. But you will be under the power of it. It will control you. It will own you. You will become its. It will not become yours. You cannot control it. It doesn't work that way. You do not have that gift, but it will take control of you. And St. Paul says, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. And you might say, Fedi, why are you bringing in a harlot? Well, what does a harlot do? In old times, a harlot is somebody that you go to for instant pleasure, instant satisfaction, it's a thing to do. It doesn't provide you any meaningful joy or fulfillment or promise of any future. It's just something instant, and it gives you this happy feeling. It gets you doped up. That is what a harlot does. Cigarettes are our harlots. They can be. So many things can be. Cigarettes are our harlots. harlots. Shall I then take the members of Christ that he made so beautifully, the body that God the Father has created so carefully and meaningfully, and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? 
For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. One body with us. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? And you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Alex asked a wonderful question in the very beginning. It doesn't say in the Bible anything about tobacco. Why is it a sin? Because you're destroying something that is not yours, something that is made for something greater, something that's made for something better, and you're taking it, it is made to be Christ, to be one with Christ so that Christ can live in you and be in you for the rest of the world. And you take it and you give it off to an addiction or to a drug or to a substance and you fall under the power of that harlot. Then you're no longer Christ. You're the cigarettes or you're the hookahs or you're the vape or you're the flash drive. You're owned by it. For you were bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. You have papers beside you on the floor, at least the first four rows, they got pens. If you guys have questions that you want to ask privately, that you're too shy to ask out loud, you can write them down. And once you guys are done with the pens, please move them down to the rows behind you. And then there's some questions for Dr. Jim. I, I have the mic. Or Dr. Jim. Oh, Dr. Jim, what's that? Dr. Jim and Dr. Jim. Okay, I just wanted to, can I add a point to this? Yeah. Um, I, I feel like everyone's looking down, so I'll take a second. Just want so just real quickly, like part of um, something that I saw was said was Fedi kept on stressing on the word wisdom, 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 like be wise. And oh, no, no, Alex's question of the lot, he asked if it, he asked if it was a sin. Um, and then Fedi gave a really good explanation about what it is to have a sin. I want to expand on the word sin. Does anyone know what the word sin is? Anyone? What's it mean to, to do something sinful? Against God's will? Anyone else? No use. Okay, it literally means missing the mark, missing the point. That's what a sin is. So it's really, really good. Like you guys, for those, because I, I feel like a lot of you guys know some of this information, and if you didn't, now you know it extensively, and Ghazban Anukum, you guys are responsible for this information as well. So when you guys go down later on, you know, and you stand before God, and, and he says, what happened? Um, you, he's gonna remind you of this two hour session that you guys had on this information. So now we go from the point about understanding what the con con consequences are, okay, and then we have to move past it. So not only are we saying, okay, what am I doing bad? But as we said with the word sin missing the mark, what am I not doing good, right? So we sit in this church hearing these discussions in the presence of like these saints. And of course, like, I mean, we could sit here and see St. Anthony, St. Beshoy, and we're not going to be like, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to be a monk. That's not my calling. But I, I don't even think these guys' discussions were like, oh, how am I going to stop being a bad person? or do bad things. Like they were so far past that point. They were like, how am I going to please God completely? So when you guys are thinking about these discussions, I want it, like I hope, I really hope that this is step one, right? And it goes past it to what's step two now. So like not only am I going to stop this behavior or not only am I going to wanna put this to the side, but I wanna take it a step further and be pleasing to God. Because I don't really think that God made us so that we could hear all these laws and all these rules and all these consequences and all these punishments. There's so much more to it than just this. So, and I just really wanted to stress because Rita re really gave such an amazing uh, explanation for you guys on all this, and it is going to be your responsibility. Like I, sometimes I go home and I get worried about the amount of grace that God's put in my life because I'm going to be responsible for that. So just likewise for you guys who are, you know, we're starting off on this stage, you guys are going to be responsible for this. And even if you're not doing it, for those that are around you, you guys are going to be responsible for giving them the news as well. That was my only point. Thank you. If you have, yeah, if you have a question. All right, the mic is here. I think it's up as well. Hold your paper if you have a question that you want to share privately. Hold your paper, pass it down with a pen, and I'll hand the mic to you guys when I come back. 
Can I ask a question? <laughs> Fadi, can I ask you a question? Okay, so um, I think some of us, like as youth, might feel a little bit helpless or powerless if our, um, like maybe parents or older siblings, like smoke some of these things, and now we have all this information, but we feel like powerless to do something about it with our parents or siblings. Do you have any advice? <laughs> like if your parents or if your role models aren't aren't proper and they're smoking how can you uh, surpass them? How, can, how can you what not surpass them i hope how can you what yeah please i said if we as youth feel like um powerless or helpless now that we know all this information, but our parents or older siblings or role models are smoking. What can we do about it? <laughs> what is the question? Uh, what, what can we do when our parents? Are yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Please what pray for them. them. Pray for them and God will uh, help and tell me who are the parents doing this and we c try to talk with them. But uh, at least pray for them. This is very uh, helpful. But um, thank you, Rita, really a good uh, topic and we will start a session after, but I would like to tell you two uh, verses from the Bible to conclude this at the law. She mentioned it is a law and the law here. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, saying, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. Imagine. If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Then this is uh, dangerous, very dangerous. If you think uh, it is fun or it is uh, any, any amusements or anything, but imagine God will destroy. Please take care. But about the parents, please pray for them. Ask God to help them to get rid of this. And if you know any parents doing that, please let me know. I'll speak with them about this. But um, speaking and talking and uh, sometimes it doesn't get to their mind, whatever they do. But please, prayer is good and uh, with faith will make a lot. Okay, please, the fervent prayer do a lot. Please remember them in your prayers. Okay? And uh, there is, uh, this is live streaming also, but maybe they don't uh, know English. <laughs> we will see <laughs> sometimes. I just want to add something to Christine's question. You can always, I mean, it needs prayer, like Abuna said, but take them to the doctor and have them start the conversation about replacement therapy and counseling. It's not a sign of weakness that they, they, they just, you know, we're blessed that we're not smoking. But number one, you need to also look at the, the full half of the cup that you're not smoking. And you need to keep it that way. And like George said, you are responsible because you heard this. Your parents or friends maybe didn't hear it at a young age and fell, uh, fell to the temptation. But number one, you need to keep keep out of the trouble and not smoke. Number two, try to encourage them to go see their doctor, go with them, and then the number one reason why um, patients are never treated for their tobacco use is because the, their doctor never asks them if they smoke or not. So you have to bring it up. You have to take your 
uh, significant other or your father or mother to the doctor and then tell them they smoke, we need help. You need help. I mean, you can't, like I said from my slide, you cannot do it on your own unless you're a very strong person, a very, you know, strong will and it, it does work, but statistics are not on your side. So just get help and then uh, pray for them and, you know, talk to the abuna and see, you know, if we can get as many people helping as possible. Dr. Jim. So tobacco addiction can be more addictive than cocaine and marijuana. If them, you know, have, and they don't, <laughs> if they have such a problem, they will of course attention, medical. But if they smoke, they will not treat it as a disease. As we presented this uh, in Rita's presentation, they, it is a disease. It is a DSM-5 uh, disease, mental disorder, okay? So not a whole lot of people know that. They don't know that it is a disease just like diabetes, just like um, a hypertension that needs medication, that needs treatment. And there is treatment for it, and it's successful. So just the mere fact that you present that information to them, they, they may not know that. They know that it's bad for your health, it causes cancer, but it doesn't happen, so I'm probably okay. But I don't know that it is a disease and there is actual treatment for it, and it is an addiction, okay? I would encourage you, after a lot of prayer, like Abuna said, after a lot of prayer, pray for them first. Do not judge them. Pray for them without judging them. And after a lot of prayer for them and for your own sake, asking God to give you words on your tongue, you go to mom or you go to dad in love and in gentleness and you tell them the truth. I don't like it when you do this, mom. I don't like it when you do this, dad. You're hurting yourself and you're hurting our family. You're hurting us because we're in the house with you. And we want to see you live a long life. And we want to see you to be happy. And we want to grow old and show you our grandchildren. And we want you to grow old with us. I don't like it. It's breaking our heart. If you do it with love, and you do it with gentleness, after a lot of prayer, so that you don't upset anybody, and that you don't disrespect anybody, you don't know what may come of it. I've had these conversations with kids, and they've changed their parents because their parents couldn't sit still without breaking down in tears because their child says, I'm scared for your life, and I'm scared for our family. Please stop. Okay, it's a bare minimum. Um, can I read that question now? Okay, so someone was saying, I heard earlier that charcoal was bad. Is it, um, if it is burned only? Like, what about charcoal and toothpaste, like one that white whitens your teeth? Um, no, because the, the one in toothpaste is actually activated charcoal. It's not the charcoal we burn. And it, it's inert, meaning it stays in your GI tract, your intestines, and it's a completely different um, material when, it, when it's being used up in the body. And actually, this activated charcoal, we use it in medicine to um, reverse poisonings. So no, it's not like charcoal we burn in hookah. And then the other question, if uh, you smoke weed, does it have the same chemicals, tobacco, nicotine, blah, blah, blah? No, weed is marijuana. Marijuana is, uh, the main component of marijuana is THC, and it binds to different receptors in your body. The main receptor we focus on is uh, serotonin uh, versus dopamine and epi and norepi with uh, cigarette smoking. And um, serotonin uh, works differently. Um, marijuana can also inhibit something called parasympathetic system, which is, um, th this parasympathetic system helps you relax and sleep, it's the opposite of your fight or flight response, your sympathetic system. And marijuana turns that off. Um, so it does work differently. It, it, it does, it's not the same chemical as nicotine or tobacco, but this is a whole different discussion for another day. There are two different drugs. They're both addictive, and 
they both work differently, they're both bad for you. We cannot compare two different things. They're both bad for you. But I will get all the statistics and deaths for marijuana and all that if we have another topic. God willing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you for listening. <laughs> I would like to appreciate and say thank you, Rita. And uh, you know, Rita is one of the servants of the church. And uh, thank you a lot. And. Um, we are in the process of many sessions about the, this type of to topics. And if you need another topics, let me know. We'll try to do it. Uh, I think we need also to speak about marijuana and uh, other uh, weeds. or And also there is a um, eating disorder or something like this. We'll speak about it on the uh, long run after many sessions. And thank to Deacon Fadi and all the people who uh, thank to all of you who are uh, being uh, uh, present in this uh, discussion and this topic. And uh, may the Lord uh, move your hearts and uh, you have the, uh, the heart which is retain this word and the mind to act on it uh, uh, rightly and the ears to uh, listen uh, uh, the, with the spiritual ear which God uh, granted you to move forward and to get rid of any bad habits, control your appetites, your habits, your any desires before they control you. As one of the sins that control your appetites before they control you. And uh, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, as you heard, and glorify God in your bodies and your spirits. Thanks to all of you. Any other questions? Can we stand for prayer? In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving us this opportunity to sit together and to be here together to listen to your word through your servants. We thank you, Lord, for the servants who are equipped and prepared and knowledgeable and experienced who have come to share that experience and knowledge with us. We thank you, Lord, for the space that you've given us to have this knowledge shared. We ask you, Lord, to renew your Holy Spirit within us each and every day after each and every lecture and each and every sermon and series so that when we walk out, we walk out renewed in your grace and prepared to take on the troubles of the world and the trials of the world. We ask you, Lord, to keep us firm in your faith to keep us firm as your children and as temples of your Holy Spirit. We ask you, Lord, to keep us under the shadow of your wings and protect us from the harms that are around us and from the, the enemy who is trying to injure us. We ask you, Lord, to protect our church and to protect our Sunday school students and to give them prosperity and success in all that they do so that they may see your glory in their lives and glorify you even more. We ask this through the intercessions. Through the intercession of St. Mary and the Archangel Michael and St. Miss Elva and Coride, the saints of this place, make us, O Lord, worthy to pray thankfully, our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Help us day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive pass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Christ Jesus, our Lord. May the love of God, the Father, and the Creator, and the grace of the only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, gift, commune, the Holy Spirit be with you, and peace, the peace of God be with you. I would like to thank Harry and Sight. He's <laughs> referring thank you to him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>